thank you for tuning in to our online worship experience here at East Shore Church United Methodist. Um, again, thank you for joining us, even with this quarantine, um, but know that God is always with us and call out to him and he will bring peace.
Good morning and welcome to East Shore United Methodist Church where we are having an online service during this COVID-19 crisis. Today's Bible scriptures come from the New Revised Standard Version. Acts 22, 6 through 16 and Acts 26, 12 through 18. So here's the first Acts 22, 6 to 16. Paul tells of his conversion. While I was on my way and approaching Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone upon me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? Then he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth. Whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. I asked, What am I to do, Lord? The Lord said to me, Get up and go to Damascus. There you will be told everything that has been assigned to you to do. Since I could not see because of the brightness of the light, those who were with me took me by my hand and led me to Damascus. A certain Aeneas, who was a devout man according to the law and well spoken of by all the Jews living there, came to me. And standing beside me, he said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. In that very hour I regained my sight and saw him. Then he said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will to see the righteousness one and to hear his own voice. For you will be his witness to all the real of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you delay? Get up, be baptized, and have your sins washed away, calling on his name. The next reading is Acts 26, 12 through 18. Paul tells of his conversion. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest. When at midday along the road, your excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles, to whom I am sending you, to open up their eyes, so that they may turn from darkness to light, and from power of the Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, greetings. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity that we could come to worship you and help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, O oh God, for each other, even for those who are worshiping at home. Yes, Lord, continue to connect us in the Spirit. Lord, we pray that you turn your word into a living bread and feed our hungry souls. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, May 24th is, is a historic date for the uh, Methodist Church for the Wesleyan Church or any group 
that traces the, uh, the history to John Wesley. June, uh, May 24th, 1738, John Wesley said, my, an experience, my heart is strangely warm. John Wesley was almost in despair. He did not have the faith to continue to preach. When death stared him in the face, he was fearful and found little comfort in his religion. The Moravians assured him their personal experiences had also been instantaneous. John found himself crying out, Lord, help my unbelief. However, he felt dull within and little motivated even to pray for his own salvation. On this day, May 24, 1738, he opened his Bible about, at about 5 in the morning and came across these words. There are given unto us exceeding great and, pre and precious promises, even that ye should partakers of the divine nature. He read similar words in other places. That evening, he reluctantly attended a meeting in Aldersgate. Someone read from Luther's preface to the Epistle to Romans. And about 8.45 p.m., while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warm. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. That was John Wesley's heartwarming experience. The heartwarming experience. This is my story. That was John Wesley's story. I have my own story. We have our own story. I have my personal conversion story. I grew up in church and then faded away and then went back when I was senior in high school. I attended Christmas youth camp and an institute way back in the Philippines in 1981. And since then, I became active in church. Apostle Paul has his own story his conversion experience on the road to Damascus. Apostle Paul, John Wesley, I myself, and others just like you. Yes, we all have our own personal stories. A story of joy, a story of salvation, a story when God, through Jesus Christ, lifted us up, changed us for the better. Our personal story of conversion is a testimony founded on an encounter with God. Experience is one of the guidelines of our faith as Methodists. Experience. Yes, God is present. We just need to experience it. John Wesley himself had his own conversion experience. My heart is strangely warm. Thomas, when he said and encountered Jesus, he said, I have seen the Lord. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. This is our personal story of salvation and conversion. Meeting Jesus in different places. Roads, gatherings, in a small group, get together, or sometimes, like life experience, we can experience God in all of those. Secondly, our personal story of conversion is a statement of faith that reflects our creed. Creed is defined as the rule of faith. Creed is something that you believe in. 
Creed is the foundation of your faith. Creed is the rule of faith. This is something that makes us going and motivates us each day. Our creed, the rule of faith. Our statement of faith is something that should stand out even in the midst of injustice, persecution, pain, and suffering. Yes, let me say that again. Our statement of faith in Christ is something that should stand out even in the midst of injustice, persecution, pain, and suffering, and even in the time, in this time of, of uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic. Our rule of faith should help us to stand above this plague. Our statement of faith should be proven consistent when put to the test of time. Yes, what we are experiencing now is a test of time. It is a test of faith. And this is the time that the rule of faith, our creed, should be put to the test. Saint Thomas Aquinas said, to one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. And to one without faith, no explanation is possible. That's why, yeah, Without faith in God to the living Christ, it would be difficult for all of us to understand the mysteries of life and the mysteries of this world. We need to have faith in God. Because if we have faith, this explanation would not be necessary. We will understand even those difficult words and situations to understand. Faith is the art of holding on to things your reason once accepted despite your changing moods. Let me say that again. C.S. Lewis said, Faith is the art of holding on to things your reason once accepted despite your changing moods. That's so deep. But C.S. Lewis was trying to say, Faith is that fabric that's holding us to understand unbelieving and understanding even those things that are hard to understand. And lastly, our personal story of conversion must bear witness and powerful enough to transform others for Christ. The Greek word meta means to become or becoming or transforming or changing our personal story of conversion must be powerful enough to impact and influence others around us one of my favorite illustrations and, and stories was about this bishop and the Nazi guards that during the time of the Nazi um, ruling this bishop was put to, the, to jail and there were Nazi guards watching him. But what is really uh, uh, amazing here was that those guards guarding this bishop, they had to be replaced every 30 minutes. They had to be replaced and put new guards every 30 minutes because they were afraid that if those guards would stay longer guarding the bishop longer than 30 minutes there's a great possibility that they would be impacted and they they, they would be transformed and converted by this bishop to his faith our personal story of conversion must bear witness and powerful enough to transform others for Christ. Personal transformation can and does have global effects. As we go, so goes the world. For the world is, is us or we are part of this world. The revolution that will save the world is ultimately a personal one. 
that was according to Marion Williamson. Personal transformation can and does have global effects. As we go, so goes the world. For the world is us. The revolution that will save the world is ultimately a personal one. Our personal stories of conversion are testimonies of truth and nothing but the truth because it is not about us but about the God whose love never fails. Our personal stories of conversion will consistently stand on the side of righteousness and will always challenge the threat of evil in different forms. Our personal stories of conversion will produce waves after waves of transforming blessings to all people who come across our path. Always be reminded that in Christ, our stories are not burdens, but blessings in all forms. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, there are so many stories of conversions and transformations, but my personal story is my favorite because in that story, you are part of it. Thank you, oh God, and we pray that this transformation story, this conversion story, will continue on to impact others and this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
healing. Most sacred heart of Jesus, like a watchful shepherd, you care for us and provide us with all that we need. You shower us with your love and send people into our lives to help care for us, especially in time of sickness or pain. I pray for healing for myself and for all who suffer because of illness or advanced age. I pray especially for the frontliners, medical, doctor, nurses, and others involved in the fight against the COVID-19 coronavirus. In the midst of our pain and weakness, strengthen our faith that we may be filled with hope in you. In the midst of our frustrations and discouragement, give us patience that we may accept our own limitations. In the midst of our loneliness and fears, help us know that we are not alone that you walk with us each moment of our lives. Be with us, Lord, in our time of need. Heal us in body, soul, and spirit, that we may rejoice in your grace and blessings in this world and come to enjoy the fullness of your presence in the life to come. We make this prayer in your name, for you are our risen Lord, Jesus. Amen. And now, may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, shall keep our hearts and our minds. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.